So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and um, a two-part video. i um, going to be looking at um, my submission for the group build that's been going on um, with some of the serious modelers. Um, so I was really keen to join in um, one of my longest serving um, subscribers, a regular follower of the channel. Um, chap who runs the channel, Jerama Modelau, Modern Model Bow, Model Dow. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, Joachim. I can't pronounce your channel. Um, but I'll put the link in the description. He does some absolutely superb modeling, um, dioramas and so forth. He's not a gamer, which is why it's always, um, always amusing me that he's been one of my longest subscribers, comments on a lot of my videos. Um, but he isn't a wargamer. Um, my, as you know, my channel is about wargaming. Um, I'm not a modeler. I'm not a painter, really. <laughs> um, I'm certainly not in the same class of modeler as uh, Joachim is. Anyway, um, he and some of his modeling buddies have been running a um, group build for artillery. Um, and um, I thought, I should get involved. I should get involved. And so... My ideal solution, because, you know, as if I haven't got enough stuff already, um, I'd use this thing. Oops, can't sit it in the screen. So this beauty, look at this. So you may remember, hang on, let me just change the direction of the camera. So this little baby. So you may remember, uh, you may remember from my um, salute video, I showed this baby off. This is a 3D printed um, model by um, Iron Gate Scenery, which um, I picked up when I was with uh, walking around salute with Martin. He picked up some um, nice uh, terrain from these people as well, but I picked up this uh, trebuchet and I really wanted to use it. And I wasn't sure how I was going to use it, but I just thought it was such a brilliant working model. I mean, look at it, it's brilliant. Um, you get the, this is the ball or the rock in its sling and you get bits of string. <laughs> and um, I wanted to use it for some of my, um, um, either probably the War of the Roses or maybe when I finally get around to doing the Baron Wars or I don't know, it'd be a nice diorama piece, but I, I thought about modeling it as a proper sort of piece. Um, but in the end, I've decided to use it as a proper wargaming um, toy. And I think uh, Joachim will forgive me for this because he knows I'm not a modeler. I'm a gamer. And so I picked up um, these fellas. These are foundry um, medieval crews. So they're not the best crew. Oops. Come on, focus. They're not the very best models, but they'll do. There is with a big rock. This guy. Not sure what he's doing there. Looks like he should be drinking. Um, I guess he's looking and shouting, telling them to fire. I don't know. Whatever. This guy's got a big mallet to knock away the uh, the thing to make it fire. And these guys. I mean, he's a bit hench, isn't he? Look at him. <laughs> Um, this guy holds, so then I've also got this guy, who, whose job it is to carry the next ball for firing along with this dude. So there you go. So that's going to be my crew, five man crew. Um, the catapult itself is, say, is 3D resin. Um, if I'm really clever, which I'm not. I might try and do it in a firing pose, so the sling is firing over. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that, but I might give it a go. Um, with the ball sort of, the ball, I keep saying ball, with the, the rock sort of flying out. Um, but I'm not quite sure how I'll do it. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. But Joachim, this is for you, mate, because you are such a great follower of the channel, and I'm really, really grateful for that and your huge support and uh, um, yeah, just 
involvement in everything we do, which is brilliant. So I really appreciate it. So I'm going to do my best to try and do something with this as part of the artillery build. So right, um, the crew have been painted up. Um, I've debated about colours and uniforms to put them in. Um, well, not uniforms, not in this period, but you know what I mean. Uh, colour schemes and what have you. But in the end, because I'm not really sure how I'm going to use this um, trebuchet, I thought I'd keep them sort of nondescript. Um, put any, no particular heraldry on them. So um, there's the guy with his big mallet. There's the guy with the big ball. I mean, it's far too small for the uh, machine. <laughs> And indeed, I think these crew, I need to get some different crews, some extra crews, because um, I don't know how many crew members would ma manage a trebuchet like this, uh, but it's probably a lot more than five. Um, nice foundry figures, these. Nice foundry. There's Mr. Hench carrying his uh, hurdle, I guess it would be. With another boulder on top. So that's the crew. I'm going to have to pull the camera out and show you the um, the main trebuchet, which I'm actually really pleased with. So bear with me. So there we have it. This is the trebuchet. Finished, based, and ready to go. I wanted it to have a dynamic pose. Dynamic pose, you know what? I wanted it to be in action. <clears throat> so it was a bit fiddly. So what I've done, this was the string you get with it, just normal um, kitchen string really, um, which I've tied and glued basically to there and around the top here. And then for this, I used water, to, well, I, I dunked it in uh, PVA glue and then moulded it to the shape I wanted and left it to dry. It largely set in the right direction, so I had to finish it off with some dabs of super glue in very strategic places and just bend it. And you could still bend it, actually, if I wanted to a bit more. <clears throat> the weight of the... Actually, even though this is just um, resin, you know, pulls it down a bit, so you sort of have to do it more than you want and then only drop down like that. You see what I mean? And then I gave it a wash with various um, various washes because the rope would not be clean and neat and tidy. Um, the counterbalance, I put a little bit of extra weight in the form of some coins underneath, which you can't see, but they are there, um, which just add, let me show, there you go. So it which just helps the balance um, because it was very difficult to get this to hold in position even with glue so um, the weight from that me and the glue here inside here um, means it seems to be holding quite well so there you go um, just did it with various woods wood browns uh, washes and then dry brush over the top don't think I've ever done the dry brush on this. I think it just gives it that little bit of dusty, dirty look, which is what I was looking for. <clears throat> the base is just using sand and various little pebbles and stuff and a few tufts around the place. Um, I think the effect is pretty good. So it could be a good centrepiece on a, on a battlefield or um, an objective, that sort of thing. So um, I'll take some stills and... Um, because it's very difficult to do, <laughs> to show this off on mass. I mean, look at the scale of this thing. There's the crew with them. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to show this off. So um, I'll do a few stills and I'll put them at the end. But thank you for watching. Um, and thank you once again to Joachim for being such a firm supporter of the channel. Um, and here is my entry to the group artillery build, my friend. Um, not quite your standard, but definitely the sort of model that I can use on the table, which, as you know, is what I do. So, thanks very much. 
If you haven't already subscribed, please whack that subscribe button. And um, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Thank you.